Hello everyone and welcome to the final day of the Championship Showdown, the Chess 960 edition or the Chess 9LX uh, edition. It's Gary Kasparov versus Fabiano Coruana. There are no more rapid games, only um, 8 uh, blitz games uh, to be played in the final day. And this is one of the games. The title is uh, from a Chess 24 tweet and I thought it described the game uh, very precisely so that's why I used it. And I forgot to mention, as I usually do uh, in the new month, uh, do check if uh, you were automatically unsubscribed from the channel, as YouTube will sometimes do this. Uh, if you if you never comment, for example, if you're not uh, active, they will think you are not a real person and they will automatically unsubscribe you from the channel. So if this happened to you, you are welcome to subscribe back. Uh, that being said, uh, let's check out the game. Kasparov with the white pieces uh, opens with c4, uh, as he does uh, in all the games. He doesn't play c4 in all the games, but he wants to uh, free his bishop pair as soon as possible. Uh, we have c6 by Caruana, knight to f3, and now f5 by Caruana. Uh, d4 by Kasparov, now freeing the dark square bishop as well, and now d6. Uh, we have castles by Kasparov and knight to f6. Uh, we have b3, uh, preparing to fianchetto the dark square bishop, and Fabi also castles. We have bishop to b2, and here Kasparov's bishop pair is uh, really awesome. That was an accidental error, and if uh, Caruana tried to do the same thing, uh, it wouldn't really work out, because he already played this f5 move, and he no longer has the opportunity of just... Uh, uh, leaving it uh, uh, unattained. For example, if uh, Caruana tried b6 here uh, to fianchetto his bishop the same way, uh, Kasparov would continue knight c2. He wants to bring this knight uh, over to e3 uh, and go after the f5 pawn. And for example, bishop b7, you could go knight e3, attack the pawn. And now if you defend it, for example, g6, now you get d5 and you completely block uh, this light square bishop. So it's really uh, out of his uh, place there, and you nicely freed your own dark square bishop. Uh, so here, uh, Fabi tries a different path of uh, development, knight to c7, and now g3. Kasparov uh, prepares to bring the queen into the game with h6, taking away the g5 square from black from white, uh, also preparing g5, as Karana uh, knows that Kasparov is going to play knight c2, knight e3, and go after the pawn. He wants to play g5 and prepare f4. Uh, knight to c2 by Kasparov, and now g5, preparing f4. Uh, we have d5 by Kasparov, now freeing this dark square bishop on this beautiful diagonal, and now c5. Uh, and knight to e3, going after the f5 pawn with the knight and the bishop. So here, uh, uh, Fabi just advances the pawn with f4, and now knight to f5. And it's a really dangerous pawn, uh, knight. Uh, on f5 going after the e7 pawn, uh, even if you don't capture it, white will play e3, open up the e-file, play rook e1, go after the backwards pawn, and it's really not allowing you to develop uh, any of your pieces. So uh, Fabi decides to take uh, to take the knight with bishop captures, bishop captures, and now queen to g7, uh, and queen to g2. Kasparov now prepares king g1, he wants to get his king away from the g-file. If the g-file opens up, he wants to be able to play rook to g1. Uh, with knight c to e8, and now comes king to h1, as planned. With g4 by Fabi, uh, and now knight to h4. Uh, now, that <coughs> that knight is a dangerous piece. Uh, the bishop can come to e6 with check, the knight can come to f5, the knight can come to g6. Uh, really just in uh, a, a very a very nice position for Kasparov. Uh, with queen g5, unpinning the queen, but Kasparov pins it again. Uh, bishop to c1, now preparing to capture an f4. With knight to h5 by Fabi, uh, guarding the f4 square, and now comes bishop to e6. Also, the threat is just pick up the bishop, uh, give up the rook for two pieces, but bishop to e6. Check by Kasparov with king to h8, and now comes, uh, you could go bishop to b2 right away with check, but Kasparov prepares it first, queen to e4. Uh, now the knight can come to g6 again with check to win material, so king back to g7, and now knight f5 check. Uh, we have king to h8, and now g captures on f4 first, and only then, after the queen moves, is Kasparov ready to play uh, bishop to b2 check. Now, you could go queen to f6 uh, to prevent bishop here, but uh, you don't really want your queen on the same diagonal as the king. Uh, rook d2 can come, then bishop here uh, will just... Uh uh, completely destroy black's position. So, Fabi tried queen to g6, and now bishop to b2 check by Kasparov. Uh, we have king to h7 and now rook to g1, finally getting that rook to the g-file. Uh, and as you can see, this bishop is uh, x-raying that g4 pawn. The rook will capture it at some point. Uh, we have knight e to f6, attacking Kasparov's queen. And now 
even though Kasparov could just uh, retreat. Uh, he decides to give up the bishop for the knight here, but for a very concrete reason. He plays bishop captures on f6, we have rook captures on f6, and now feel free to pause the video and try to find this very concrete reason uh, Kasparov had for giving up his, uh, well, his dragon. Uh, well, I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent spotter of concrete reasons. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, rook captures on g4. Uh, this is Kasparov's idea. Now, of course, if you capture the rook, you get knight captures on e7, you open up a discovered check, you open up a discovery uh, against the queen, and now you'd have to go queen g6, now just knight captures the queen, rook captures, and rook g1, you attack the pin piece, and this is now all over. Uh, so after uh, this rook captures on g4, Fabio, of course, said, I'm not touching that rook. He played the rook captures on e6 with the idea that if rook captures queen, then rook captures queen. But Kasparov again said, queen captures on e6. And now the problem is if you trade queens, for example, queen captures, you get the d captures on e6 and uh, what, what do you play here? Uh, rook f8, you go after the knight, but now just e4. Uh, Kasparov is up the exchange, he, he's, he has more pawns and this bishop is really not looking all that great. Uh, white would be completely winning here. You'd have to play d5 to free your bishop, but even with this pawn sacrifice, you're not really uh, freeing it because if you ever capture, for example, bishop captures on f4, you just get knight captures on e7 and now this pawn uh, just easily wins the game. Uh, you, you can also attack the, the knight uh, and it, it's all over. Either the knight will fall uh, or you will have to remove the defender of the bishop, but, but simply pushing the d-pawn just wins. Uh, so after queen captures an e6, Fabi said, uh, okay, I can't trade queens, we play queen captures rook, uh, but now comes the idea Kasparov had, queen captures on h6 with check, king g8, and now rook to g1, and it was in this position that Fabiano Corano resigned the game. You're losing the queen and you have no counterplay. For example, after queen captures, king captures. Uh, you can't move the knight as uh, mate is being threatened. If you don't move it, white will just capture it. You could try e6 to try something to get your rook into the game. But even after captures, you still can't get your rook into the game. Now rook d7 uh, as the pawn covers that square. So uh, you're just getting mated in, in a few moves. So of course, Fabi saw that after rook g1, he resigned the game. And uh, a very nice 27 uh, move miniature by the former world champ chess champion Gary Kasparov. Uh, now uh, uh, the game end the match ended yesterday, and out of uh, the 26 possible points, uh, Caruana won 19 points, Kasparov won 7 points, and it's a really uh, a crushing result in, in favor of Caruana. But if you look at all the games that Kasparov had uh, completely winning, uh, especially in the rapid section, as rapid games are. Uh, uh, being uh, pointed two points uh, for a win, whereas blitz games are only one point for a win. Uh, if we take into consideration that Kasparov could, uh, should have won the two games that he blundered in a move and that one that he uh, lost on time in a completely winning position and that he didn't lose uh, all the games where he was just better, uh, it, the, the result could have easily been, for example, something like 13-13, to 13, which is not bad considering uh, Caruana is world number two. Uh, but yeah, uh, and if you're wondering, uh, yeah, also I'd like to mention uh, Caruana was awarded $30,000 for this uh, uh, victory in this match, whereas uh, Gar, uh, Kasparov with the second place got $20,000. And if you're wondering why we were only showing uh, Kasparov versus Caruana games, well, that's because Kasparov only comes out of retirement uh, once a year, and uh, we never know if this will actually happen. So when it does, uh, we uh, at least I enjoy those games, and I would like to uh, check out as, as many of them as possible. And I, I hope you share this feeling, as uh, I, I've been only showing those games for the past uh, four days. Uh, but yeah, I do hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I don't know. Uh, before, I wasn't really into Chess 960, but here um, I, I really enjoyed it and really after a, a few initial moves, uh, after your castles is done, uh, it, it, the positions really resemble positions you would have in normal chess, uh, so it's really not uh, all that big of a deal. And the, already you can see some patterns appearing in the openings, uh, like first you want to free the bishops and the queen, uh, which would you do in classical chess, and I don't know, it seems, seems pretty enjoyable. Uh, so really, I do hope you enjoyed it, and maybe we're going to show uh, a game or two from the Chess 960 edition. Uh, I will check uh, on, on your suggestions if, you, if you've suggested any, and uh, we're, we're going to take it from there. If not, we're continuing the Capablanca saga. Uh, we have to finish that, and then we're uh, starting a new series. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Patrick Pogoda, uh, Max Van Hotum, and Shang Lu for the contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, Maybe with a few more games uh, of this Chess 960 edition, continuing the Capablanca saga and checking up on your excellent suggestions. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.